the Blue Yeti is one of the top recommended podcast microphones for beginners. And although it's still a great option, the Shure MB7, which is what I am using here, is one of the newer picks that a lot of people have been asking me about. So today I wanted to compare the Blue Yeti against the Shure MB7. I also want to bring in the Shure SM7B, which is the microphone used by a lot of the top podcasters, to do a few audio tests between these two mics and talk about which one I would recommend for different podcasters and online business owners. Hey, I'm Melissa and welcome back to Wit & Wire, where we help creators turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. And since I've had podcasts podcasting courses for years, and I'm the host of Booksmart and the Wit & Wire podcast, I get asked about microphones all the time, as in it is the number one trafficked page on the Wit & Wire website, and I rank on the number one page on Google, which is wild. Today, I really thought it'd be helpful to show you an audio comparison between the two mics because they are at pretty different price points. The Blue Yeti is usually around 120, while the Shure MB7 is around 250. So since it's double the price, I really wanna explore the differences between the two and let you hear the difference to see if you can hear a difference. First, let's take a quick look at the Blue Yeti. So the Blue Yeti is a USB microphone, which means that you have a cord that plugs from the bottom of the microphone directly into your computer. And there are some dials on the back where you can control the gain and the setting of the mic. One of the interesting things about the Blue Yeti is the fact that it has those different settings, but the one that you'll want is the one that looks like this lima bean. It's called the cardioid setting, and that's the one that only picks up sound from the front of the mic, which is what you want when you're recording a podcast. The other settings to give you a comparison are things like omnidirectional, which means it would pick up sound from all around the mic. But again, for podcasters, cardioid is the setting you'll want. Then on the top, we have the gain dial, which you'll adjust in either direction. And I do recommend doing some sound checks to see what fits your space. Gain is your microphone's way of picking up either more sound or less sound. That's the best way I can describe it. So if it sounds like it's really intense, if it sounds like your voice is cracking and it's painful almost to hear, that means that your gain is too high, but you may go too low and then risk not hearing your voice at all. It'll sound way too quiet. So you'll have to test it out in your own space to hear what's right for you. On the front, we also have a couple more buttons. The mute button does exactly what you think. And if it's blinking red, you are muted. And then the volume dial actually controls the headphones. If you have headphones plugged into the bottom of the mic, that controls how loud you hear the audio, but it doesn't actually control the level of the recorded sound. So to quickly differentiate, Gain controls what the recording sounds like, while volume controls how loud you hear it in your ears. So adjusting the volume dial does not affect the recording itself. When we get into the audio demo, you'll see me add a pop filter to the Blue Yeti, and that eliminates some of the popping P sounds. It's called a plosive. And just having that screen in front of the mic makes a huge difference. So if you do have a Blue Yeti, I would definitely recommend spending the 15 to $20 to get a pop filter. Moving on to the Shure MV7. If you take a look at the back of the mic, you'll notice that there are three inputs, a headphone jack, an XLR cable, and a micro USB cable. The MV7 comes with the cable that connects the micro USB into your computer, into a USB port. So you don't have to buy that separately, but it is worth mentioning that if you are a Mac user or depending on the computer you have, you may also need to purchase an adapter so that you can plug it into your computer. The interesting thing about the MV7 though, is that it also has this XLR cable. So although you probably wouldn't be using both at the same time, you have the option to either treat this as a USB microphone or as an XLR microphone. An XLR does require an additional piece of equipment called an audio interface. So instead of plugging an XLR cable directly into your computer, which doesn't work, you would plug that cable into the interface where you have some additional audio controls in the same way that we saw with the Blue Yeti, things like a gain dial and a couple other things depending on your interface. But then there's a second cord that plugs from the interface into your computer. That's an extra piece of equipment that may not be right for most people tuning in, trying to evaluate which mic is right for you. So for the sake of this video and for the audio demo, I'm going to treat both of them as USB microphones. What's cool about the MV7 is that when you use it as a USB, there are actually some touch sensors along the mic that you can use to increase the volume, to switch the settings or to mute that I think are really nice because they don't make a sound. When you use the Blue Yeti, if you wanna click the mute button, it does make a little bit of a sound. So I think that those are some nice additions to the MB7. 
And the reason why they don't matter if you're using the XLR cable is because the audio interface, that second piece of equipment, would be the place where you control the mic itself. Another interesting element with the MV7 is the fact that when you do use it as a USB microphone, it actually comes with free software from Shure called Shure Plus Motive, where you can adjust some additional settings. So in a traditional XLR microphone, the audio interface would be your control center with different dials. But in the absence of that interface, Shure has inserted this free software almost as the middleman. So you do have some additional controls and I will bring those up during the demo in just a second. But before we do the demo, I wanted to talk about the differences between the MV7 and the Shure SM7B. When you compare the MV7 and the SM7B next to each other, they look really similar. They both have a metal body. They both have a yoke that you can use to attach the mic to a boom arm. But when you take off the windscreen, that's when you can really start to see that the microphone itself looks very different. So don't be fooled. It's not just that the MV7 is a smaller microphone. It is a completely different microphone with a totally different build. Now, speaking of the windscreen, as a pro tip I found, thanks to the wonders of YouTube, you can purchase the SM7B windscreen for about $14. And the quality is a lot higher than the windscreen that comes with the MV7. And the pro tip that I found is that the SM7B windscreen does a much better job preventing plosives. So that upgrade for me has been totally worth it. And that's why I did end up deciding to purchase the MV7 instead of the SM7B. I really hope I'm getting all these acronyms right throughout the whole video, but if not, I apologize. The other aesthetic difference between the two mics is that the MV7 has the Shure logo along the side, while the SM7B does not. And I think more interesting than just saying, oh yeah, one has a logo, one doesn't, is that I think this gives a nod towards Shure's intention for who should buy each mic. The MV7 was positioned as a mic for podcasters, for YouTubers, and for streamers. And so I think Shure is putting their marketing front and center because they had a feeling that this mic might be on video. So respect, more power to them. But I think that again, beyond just the obvious, can you see the logo or not? It is a hint at who they think is using this microphone. Between the two Shure mics, the MB7 and the SM7B, I don't believe that most beginner podcasters or online business owners need to take the splurge into the world of SM7B, buying that second piece of equipment, the audio interface, and then potentially buying even more equipment to boost the sound. So I would recommend that for the purpose of our demo, we are really deciding between the Blue Yeti and the Shure MB7. But obviously, if you want to splurge your little heart out, I will not be the one to stop you. Clearly, I own more microphones than I know what to do with, so I'm not in a place to judge. Now let's change this setup a bit to see if we can do a side-by-side -side audio comparison of the two microphones. Okay, it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out how to set this up, but now we have the Blue Yeti mounted on a puzzle <laughs> with a candle on top of it. You can hear me switching back and forth. Right now, I am using the Blue Yeti, talking a little bit more in this direction so you can hear how it sounds. And now I'll angle a little bit more to the MB7 to hear if there is a difference, you can let me know in the comments if you hear a difference between the two. I won't know until afterwards when I listen to the recording. But when I listen, I definitely hear that the MB7 just sounds a little bit warmer, for lack of a better term. And my recording space is very quiet. But when I've been in other spaces that are more echoey, the MB7 tends to still sound a little bit nicer while the Blue Yeti just picks up every single echo and the sound of every single breath. So a small pro tip I will share is that if when you're editing your podcast, you feel like you're constantly just editing out the sound of you breathing, one editing hack would be to upgrade your microphone because a nicer microphone doesn't have that harsh breathing sound in the way that any $100-ish microphone will sound. We've done a little bit of a back and forth here, but I also want to pull up the Shure Plus Motive software to show you how you can do a little bit of extra stuff with the MB7. To give you the comparison though with the Blue Yeti, there's no additional software, but I could change the gain on the back. So as I'm changing the dial, you should be able to hear a pretty significant difference. And then I'm changing it back towards the middle. And now the gain is much higher. Oh, I'm gonna turn it back down, but you can hear that that gain dial definitely has an effect on the Blue Yeti, 
But now let's switch over our setup to do the software demo. Okay, now we have the Shure Plus Motive software open, which again is free with any Shure microphone. And this is where it starts to get really interesting because while the Blue Yeti has the gain dial on the mic, this is Shure's response to how they can keep this microphone updated even as small new updates come out. So we are using the USB settings. This will only work if you're using the mic as a USB, but you can see we have some auto levels and then the option to manually adjust levels. If we scroll down, just to give you a sense of some of the tools here, we have two mic positions, near and far. So I'm on the near setting, and if I move back here, probably can't hear me too well. But if I use the far setting, you should actually be able to hear me a little bit better. So I think this is really interesting for streaming, for YouTube, for anything where you may not wanna be right up on the microphone. So that's some added flexibility that the Yeti doesn't have. I'm gonna switch back to near and come in a little bit closer. We also have some preset features called tone. Right now I'm using the natural tone. I'm gonna to switch over to dark. This is what I think the SM7B is really known for, like a rich, dark tone, a warm quality to the voice. I think you'll really hear it when I go over to bright. Bright sounds totally different. I'll be honest, I don't really know who's gonna use the bright setting. I think most of us will choose dark or natural, but now you can see how this microphone can really evolve to fit different tones appropriately. Uh, let's go back to natural. Switching over to the manual settings, you see a ton of additional options. Here we have the gain. So this is the equivalent of the dial on the Blue Yeti. So if I turn this down, you should be able to hear a pretty clear difference between where it was before and here. Let's move it back up a little bit. This sounds probably a little bit more appropriate. We could play around with that for a while. Let's set it around here and then we'll scroll down to the EQ, the limiter and the compressor. If you don't feel like audio engineering is your expertise, you can just stick with the auto settings. But I think that the limiter is helpful to know that if you regularly like top out or you feel like your gain feels kind of screechy, the limiter can help with some of those things. What I'll say as a tip when you're running a soundtrack is that right now I'm talking at like a pretty even tempo with a pretty neutral voice. But when we do interviews, especially, we tend to laugh or we react and we get a lot louder. So I would do some testing with the limiter on versus off to see how it sounds when you get excited. And then the last noteworthy slider is compressor. Right now it's off, but I'm gonna switch it all the way to heavy. This is where you should hear a difference. Again, I feel like the SM7B is known for having like higher compression and I'll switch it back so you can hear the difference. Here I am just talking where the compression is now off. There's no right or wrong. It's mostly about what you prefer. So the takeaway from using this Sure Plus mode of software, I hope, is that you can play around with the different settings to see what sounds best on your voice using this microphone. Now that you've had a chance to hear both, it comes down to the ultimate question, which microphone should you choose? I really don't think that there's a better or worse option, but because they're at two drastically different price points, I think the Blue Yeti is probably a fit for somebody who's just getting into podcasting, you're dabbling a little bit. Maybe later on you would upgrade to the Shure MB7, the SM7B, or any other incredible microphones available for purchase. But what I like about the MB7 is the flexibility with the near and far mode, the ease of choosing a tone instead of manually adjusting gain and EQ. And so I think this could be a great mic for somebody who does podcasting, but potentially also video or YouTube, because this is the mic I use in my YouTube videos. I didn't buy a separate mic to go with my iPhone, which is how I'm recording this video. I decided to use what I already had. So I plug this into my computer with that USB cord, and then I sync the video and the audio file together. I also think that the MV7 was the right choice for me because I had already been podcasting for a while and my ears know too much. Like I can hear every little breath and there became a moment where I would listen to myself in Blue Yeti recordings where I felt like I could just hear every single echo and I was spending all this time editing out breaths, which you do not need to do. But because I had hit a point where the podcast was doing well enough and I felt like my ears had become maybe sensitive to the way that raw recordings sounded, I knew that upgrading to any different microphone in the like $250 to $400 tier would make a huge difference where I could save time editing. And that was a huge tipping point for me. The fact that I could use it for YouTube was just a bonus. 
I would love to know in the comments what microphone you use or if this was a helpful comparison between the two options. And if you're looking for my full list of current microphone recommendations, you'll find a link in the description or you can visit witandwire.com slash microphones. And since you're already here, here is the next video tutorial that I would recommend for you.